I'd like to call the order of the uh, December 18th, 2019. Uh, this will be the informational meeting uh, portion of the agenda today. Um, we have actually two agendas today. One is uh, uh, for our, Tim, do you want to explain the informational meeting? Sure. To the um, people. Uh, the DDA is required twice a year to hold an informational meeting. Uh, that's a new requirement under Public Act 57 that was passed in 2018. Um, we provided notice uh, of the informational meeting to the various taxing jurisdictions that the DDA captures revenue from. Uh, and as part of the informational meeting, uh, we'll have a brief discussion on, on a couple of items. Uh, According to the statute, uh, the DDA doesn't even need a quorum. Uh, it's just to provide some information, so it shouldn't take very long. And then we'll uh, adjourn into our regular meeting. We do have uh, <clears throat> public comment available for both sections of the meeting. Most of the agenda items are on the secondary portion. Um, you do have an opportunity to speak at public comment for the informational meeting, but then you'll have another opportunity to speak uh, when we get into the regular agenda. So at this time, um, would be public comment for the informational meeting. If there's anybody out there that wants to address uh, the DDA uh, for this portion, uh, now would be that time. Uh, seeing nobody, uh, we'll move on to the informational meeting. Uh, as I indicated, the DDA is required to hold two. Um, it's a new requirement uh, uh, that really came effective in July. Uh, the DDA held their first one informational meeting in October of this year, and at that time went over the uh, goals and objectives, the development plan, uh, and some informational items real briefly. At this point, what I've included in your packet uh, is uh, a report, uh, the annual report for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, 2019, or last fiscal year for both, both budgets. Basically, that can, that'll show you what actually occurred last year as it compared to the budget, uh, the revenues brought in, the expenses that went out in totality as well as a fund balance for both your development fund and your operating fund. Uh, the operating fund is the first one in the, in the packet, and the uh, development fund would be the uh, second annual report. Also attached to that is a copy of the form that the uh, city DDA is required to uh, submit to the Treasury Department. It's not quite entirely completed. It's due this month. Uh, it's based on information provided by uh, the city's finance department, the city assessor, uh, as well as uh, planning staff. Uh, the form is kind of a duplicate of what's in the annual report. Uh, there are additional information in there in terms of where tax income revenue <coughs> came from in broad categories, i.e., which, uh, which taxing levies uh, uh, the DDA captured from uh, and which ones it didn't. Again, then it has ex expenditures uh, uh, as item. The one portion that isn't entirely complete yet and whether or not it needs to be included is a section on non-bonded indebtedness and bonded indebtedness. Um, you don't, DDA doesn't technically have any of its own DDA bonds sold, uh, but you are party to uh, some city bonds in terms of DDA financing contracts uh, and we're trying to determine what the state treasury wants in regards to how those are identified. So that part's not quite done. Uh, and then the, uh, there's a page or two on the uh, taxable values which are basically the uh, uh, value of the land, uh, value of the property in the DDA TIF district both from its uh, initial base year, depending on when each TIF district was created or, or expanded, uh, versus the uh, current year value. Um, and 
a lot of there's some background to that out of the uh, city treasurer's office uh, that provided some city assessor as well. Uh, unless you have questions on it, that's all I really have uh, to provide you with. Uh, if there are no questions, you can adjourn the meeting and do the uh, regular uh, DDA meeting. Any of the members uh, have any questions for the executive director? Uh, one, one quick one. Tim, the, uh, the increase in revenue is um, a, a chunk of that 400 in North Main? Well, there would be a portion of it. Okay. Uh, I, I imagine it's not 100% on the roll yet because the North building wasn't quite finished last December. Okay. But I'm going to say it would go up a little more uh, next year as well. Okay. Anything else from the members on the informational portion? Okay. I would look for a... Uh, no, you don't need a motion. Just adjourn motion. it. You okay. can do it into the regular meeting. We'll adjourn then. Uh, there should be a different tab there open on your screen that you can uh, touch that will uh, give you the irregular agenda. <coughs> I will call to order the December 18, 2019 regular meeting at this time. Um, now would be the time for uh, public comment or any uh, thing that's on the agenda here or anything you want to address the DDA concerning. Um, so if you would like to address the DDA, if you'd raise your hand and be recognized, and then just give your uh, name for the record. Anybody want to address the DDA? Yes, sir. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is John Hanselman. I'm the general manager uh, and the agent of Essendon, Maine, uh, right here at 205 South Maine, corner of Maine and 2nd. Uh, wanted to thank you for your consideration of our grant application, um, which would enable us to provide signage it's, um, that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Uh, furthermore, uh, to thank the folks that have uh, come to our restaurant already and checked us out. So thank you for the opportunity to petition the DDA uh, for that assistance. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay, they may come up during the agenda, so. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to address the DDA at this point? Okay, I'll close public comment. Bring us back to the regular agenda. Uh, item number three, approval of the meeting minutes from November 20th, 2019. I'll move to approve the minutes as submitted. Motion Support. to approve and supported. Anybody have any questions? or changes to the meeting minutes? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number four is uh, expense items, monthly expenses. This is for informational purposes only. If any of the members have any questions for the executive director, now would be the time. Any questions? We're good? Okay. Okay. Can I ask one we question? We do. Yeah, what's, absolutely. What's the billboard ads, the out front? What would, what would we be, what would that expense be for? Um, Tim, you or Gary? Gary? 
I can answer that. Go ahead. Okay, Sean. Um, please. So we have an advertising budget. Uh, we advertise on numerous platforms. Uh, it's part of the the uh, campaign that we got when we had the advertisements made by Factory Detroit Media. So we have commercials that air, say, on Comcast and WDIV. We have radio commercials. We also have out-of-home advertisement, uh, digital media that we advertise with out front, and that's uh, we have about six billboards that are up and down I-75 and on 696. Okay. Thanks. Okay. DDA meeting schedule. Um, as every year, uh, this time of year, the DDA uh, needs to set its schedule for next calendar year. Uh, we've provided you with a list of uh, the normal dates and potential conflicts. Uh, your normal meeting date is the third Wednesday of the month at 4 o'clock. Uh, if you want to stay with that, there's a simple resolution included in the cover memo. Uh, if you wanted to change dates, uh, you could either do it now or, frankly, you can do it uh, during the, throughout the year if it need be. So just looking for a motion uh, to set the meeting schedule for next uh, calendar year. I'll move the resolution to set the meeting schedule. Motion by Director Krieger. I approve. Second by Director Rosbeck. Does anybody have any comments or questions no. regarding? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number six, facade grant application 215 South Main Street. Sean? Uh, as mentioned during public comment, the DDA received an application for a facade grant, applica uh, facade grant uh, for uh, 215 South Main. Uh, the business there is a new business, Essen on Main. It's a new restaurant that replaced Beirut Palace. Um, the uh, application went to the uh, Infrastructure Committee meeting uh, in November. Um, we, uh, we've been working with the building department to make sure that the sign portion of the, uh, of the application actually meets the sign regulations in sign area three, which governs the downtown signage. Um, the application requests a combined revised total of $9,187.50. Um, so we have a resolution attached to this cover letter. Um, and how it's worded is that uh, the facade grant works um, in that it, it funds 50% of the project costs as a reimbursement uh, in an amount not to exceed $10,000. So although we have an application for $9,187.50, uh, we have to verify that when the work is complete by looking at the receipts and, and pictures of the completed work. Um, so that, that amount, that request, is subject to change if, if the overall costs do change. But uh, the, the grant limit in the program description is $10,000. Questions? I was gonna I was gonna move the resolution and then have, start with discussion if you want. Okay. To do that. That'd be great. Um, so, to my eye, I think that that sign meets what we would want. It's a freestanding sign. It's pin mounted, so it looks more architectural. We're gonna light it with gooseneck gooseneck lights, which I think is very tasteful. It's not just a backlit sign, so I think it fits the design standards that are recommended in our ordinance. And uh, personally, I like it, so that's why I'm moving the resolution. So I make sure that even though they're not showing the gooseneck lights, I know it's in writing, but my understanding is that the DDA checks it before we actually reimburse it. So Sean, is that something that you do? Yeah, so okay. um, they're required to also submit photos of the completed work. I'll also go out there and take a look yeah. at it and take my own photos and just verify all of the work that's completed with the receipts too. Yeah. And as well as the finalized permits. Yeah. And also they're applying signs around the building, so it's not just on the front. So, you know, I like it. So that's why I'm, I'm making a recommendation to approve it. So I have a motion on the table. Let's deal with that first. Uh, supported by Director Riley. Uh, any other discussion? I do have a question also. Um, the, so the, the, 
the amount of 9187 is was that broken down into was that just just the sign itself was there some additional there was some additional work being done and did that all meet the criteria of Yes. So typically, what we would or would not approve. <coughs> right. There's a breakdown in the uh, in the attached application. Um, let me go to it right now. There's an invoice. So the cost of the new signage uh, is estimated um, at a total of fourteen thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars. Um, a portion of that, uh, the gooseneck lighting, was quoted out to be approximately three thousand um, dollars. As well as the cost of the facade improvements, there were some repair work, some painting, uh, some things uh, of that nature that's going to go in the, the sign area. Uh, that was estimated about $3,500. So that uh, brings the total cost of the project to $17,875. 50% of that um, was originally $8,937. Um, but we, res we received some revised quotes from the applicant um, that brought that number up to the, the 91 80 and some change okay Tim also would you just remind me uh, don't we typically before the reimbursement is paid does that typically come back to this body or no generally speaking it comes back for your approval as uh, that it, the finished product meets the intent of it so yes so we'll see this again we'll see the finished product gotcha okay Okay. I just have a question. Mr. Hanselman, is that, no, no, you, it's informational. Has is, is that entrance always been there to that space on the north side? Yes. yes. I never knew that. I never knew, I never, I never knew that. Yeah. When, when, when Brugger's uh, came in in 1995 and they took over the whole property, they set that up that way so that there was a, a communal entrance on the side. Incidentally, that was the issue that we dealt with the building department because they're counting the Bruger signage into our <coughs> maximum allowed signage. So we've had to try to figure out a way to have good looking signage without it being awkward uh, uh, because we're, the Bruger signage is counting against ours. Because it's one, basically one building at that point and it's, it's one, the one square, square footage, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, anything else on this? Okay, I have a motion on the table. Um, if there's nothing else, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. <coughs> Item number seven, reimbursement trailhead LLC. Uh, the, some DV, DDA members may recall that uh, the board entered into a, an agreement with uh, trailhead LLC. It's in regards to the property at uh, 400 North Main Street. Uh, the address, I believe, range from 400 to 460 uh, North Main. Uh, the project includes the uh, Hyatt Place Hotel, uh, the parking deck and uh, parking uh, lot to the east of the hotel, and it also includes the uh, Icon Building, which is not entirely finished in terms of build out inside. Um, but all of the exterior improvements have been done and all of the uh, uh, temporary CFO has been issued for the, the, the space. Anything further would be simply tenant build out. Uh, the agreement called for the uh, hotel to be done and for the hotel to be done first before they could submit for a request. Uh, they have done that. Uh, I did go to the business marketing committee back in August of this year uh, the committee was comfortable with taking a waiver of liens to show that the, any expenses related to the el eligible public improvements had been done and had been paid. Uh, those are all attached, uh, as well as a summary of the public improvement costs that are eligible for reimbursement under this agreement the DDA entered into. Uh, you may recall that the total reimbursement over a 10-year period is capped at $3 million. 
whichever occurs first would be the if three million occurs first it's done if ten years passes um, it's done at that point as well whether three million has been reimbursed or not um, attached to the uh, uh, memo is also a summary of the uh, taxes paid and captured for uh, winter and summer summer payments uh, for your information uh, and based on the reimbursement agreement the DDA is uh, uh, keeping the first $21,000 roughly of captured revenue and then splitting uh, the increase on an 80-20 uh, split. Uh, so you'll see that the eligible reimbursement is uh, two trailhead is for this current request and f initial request is $225,545.69. Uh, if the DDA is... Uh, in agreement and with the submission as well as the uh, completion and the business marketing committee's position uh, there is a suggested resolution approving per, approving the uh, submitted materials and authorizing uh, reimbursement to proceed questions a quick uh, so my company worked on this project, so I'm going to recuse myself from okay. any discussion or a vote. So. Again, just informational, Tim. So, and this was this is as of obviously as of December 31st, where the project was, right? Yeah, it's as of the taxes that they've actually paid. So right. it's. Any other questions? There is a business marketing looked at this, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a suggested resolution. I'll move the resolution contained in uh, <coughs> the executive director's memo dated December 11th of this year. I have a motion on the table. Second. And a second. Is there any other questions regarding this? Okay, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> okay, item number eight. Second amendment to the fourth restated festival agreement, Arts, Beats, and Eats. Um, Jason back? Oh, yes. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, there was a request to the DDA uh, uh, to the DDA to extend the uh, uh, Arts, Beats, and Eats Festival agreement. Um, the DDA was at its prior meeting in November, uh, supportive of that, <coughs> uh, subject to a um, revised festival agreement being submitted for review and approval. The Consumer Marketing Committee did meet in November and discussed it. Uh, and is recommending uh, uh, various provisions as part of that uh, document. Uh, the city attorney has drafted uh, a draft document that is attached that addresses the uh, uh, request of the Consumer Marketing Committee. Um, there is a suggested resolution there if the DDA is supportive of the Consumer Marketing Committee's uh, uh, recommendations in terms of the Second Amendment to the Fourth Restated Festival Agreement. It's getting to be a mouthful. Yeah. Um, Job security for <laughs> yeah. uh, Other options were discussed as indicated in, in requests in, in terms of what I've included in memo. Uh, if, I don't know if the Consumer Marketing Committee members want to uh, uh, make any additional comments before proceeding, but... I think before we get into the comment section, I think it'd be right. I see Mr. Witz is in the audience. If he wants to address the DDA at this time, now would be probably the appropriate time. And then if any of the members have any questions. Mr. Chair, while he's approaching, if I could, maybe I can just 
summarize the changes sure. that are contained in the four points just so everybody that would be good thank what you the purpose of those are again this goes back to the uh, agreement the city the DDA uh, and the DDA had with art speeds and eats for festivals for 28 to 2017 through 2021 um, uh, the uh, changes in paragraph one uh, which would be a section two of the agreement would extend the dates through 2024 um, the prior agreement provided for the parties to meet a certain number of days prior to the expiration of that agreement to discuss an extension that same window is maintained the dates are just pushed forward um, <clears throat> the changes to section 4f of the agreement um, the first couple sentences of the language in 4f uh, would be identical um, the last sentence uh, ABE agrees to meet with the DDA prior to and no more than 45 days after the festival each year to discuss negative and or positive feedback related to the festival. That's language that um, is inserted basically at the request or suggestion of the City Commission. Um, when the City Commission approved um, an extension to the agreement, uh, there was concerns about uh, the opportunity for feedback and, and that was suggested so that language is in there again at the request or suggestion of the City Commission um, and I do not believe that uh, Mr. Witz has an objection to that language. Um, paragraph 3 providing for the uh, reimbursement of the DDA for the sponsorship fee um, again the first couple sentences of the proposed changes to section 4G um, would remain the same the language that would be different would be the last section beginning in 2020 if the DDA fails to be reimbursed for 50% of its sponsorship fee in any two years of this agreement the DDA reserves the right to reduce the amount of the fee after a good faith discussion with a B and E and again this uh, comes forward at, at the recommendation of uh, the subcommittee um, and I think um, this is a point of contention with mr. Witz and I think it's something that we need to discuss today um, finally uh, the changes to section 4h is really more clarification in my mind than anything else um, the prior agreement provided that for 2018 2019 and 2021 the city itself would also be paying a sponsorship fee to arts beats and eats um, the uh, amendment that I had drafted and that was approved by the City Commission um, didn't make clear that in the extended years of the agreement that the city would continue to pay that sponsorship fee I think that was the underlying assumption on my part and the City Commission's part so again, I don't see this as a substantive change this is just clarifying the city's obligation to pay the sponsor fee in the additional years to the agreement between the three parties so those are the, uh, the proposed changes um, again I think what's really at issue here is the last uh, sentence that we're proposing to add to section 4g of the agreement mr. Gillen so the the contract itself will be in place through 2024 is that correct? That's correct. And then typically, Mr. Witz, you come before the city two years prior to the expiration of the contract. That's looking, what the historical. That's time the historical. Frame that, yes. that, I just want to get the time frame down. Yes, 100%. So I have it. And the purpose of that is the uh, an event of this magnitude in nature would, you know, really require that length of time to investigate going to a different location and all the meetings and planning it's just such a mammoth event to relocate the event that you know we would ask time to research that um, and that's just you know that's uh, you know that's that's the case and and again in no period of our history since we've been in Royal Oak has has have we ever had that thought or or uh, you know interest uh, we love it here and we've been contacted many times by folks about it but we have never pursued any thoughts on our own we we love being in Royal Oak okay thank you Mr. Gillen for uh, clearing uh, that up and uh, showing us what we need to what we need to get done today 
Um, so, it's, so it's basically just a, so I'm sure it's a five-year contract, basically, at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. But five years from the event. Right. Yeah, three, yes, but, five years from this yeah. point, okay. correct. Correct. Right. Um, if none of the members have objection, if Mr. Witz wants to address it, would, is that appropriate for now for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess I would just state a couple things. I don't want to, uh, you know, go into a major presentation about the event. I did send the Consumer Marketing Committee um, just some background on, uh, on marketing values that the festival brings uh, to the city, and I also sent it to uh, uh, Board Member Rossbeck, who I know is, uh, you know, new to the process and the review of the event, so I also sent one to her as well. Um, the values there are significant combined. It's in the, you know, two and a half million dollars, not including social media of promotional and marketing value between editorial coverage, et cetera. And it's a significant benefit. There's economic impact mostly to the positive. I know there are not every business is touched right. I would also say, again, this is a very short synopsis that holiday weekends are generally very quiet uh, in most downtowns and and the history before according to people who we spoke with back when we were here 10 years ago believe it or not is that labor day weekend was a very quiet weekend and just brings a lot of attraction and people again it does not hit everybody in a sweet spot uh, um, the dda historically um, for an event of this value magnitude attendance has not paid any money uh, to the event. Uh, it's been reimbursed by parking. Um, and with that being the case, considering other events that are invested in by the DDA, the value, you know, to the DDA is um, of a very significant nature for that investment, you know, of zero over time. I know there is some risk there. Um, I have contention uh, with the new paragraph uh, or the new sentence that was added about parking, even though there is a a strong unlikelihood of that happening. Uh, we have uncertainties uh, at the time that those that year could be in place. Our title sponsorships expired. Our presenting sponsorships expired. There are a lot of unknowns up there, and I don't think there's a reason to materially change the contract, which if the DDA acted on that, even after a reasonable discussion, it would be out of our control, and we do not know the situation of it. So that's the reason for contention you know, and, and the fact that we're not okay with that uh, specific provision. I do have a recommendation uh, to the DDA going forward that I just think is a, a reasonable one, and I would bet you the commissioners uh, would agree to it. There have been, while there haven't been re revenue deficits, with the exception of the second year, I believe there was an 8,500 deficit, uh, you know, uh, to the DDA. With the exception of that, there have been several years, many years, where there have been surpluses. And that surplus money has gone to uh, build park spaces, et cetera. My recommendation is that there's a concern about funding is that when you have a revenue surplus from parking, that there is an escrow account uh, created. And, you know, once you've built that to a $50,000 level, then you could apply, you know, excess revenue to parking. And then that would be fairness to the DDA that re excess revenue could cover them if there was a rainy day fund. And I think that would be a reasonable solution, um, you know, to fears of, you know, the fact that the DDA could actually invest money into our event, which I don't <laughs> think would be the worst thing if it came down to the fact that, you know, that a payment actually did come out of your budget. Um, you know, I don't think that would be the, the worst thing, you know, about it. But historically, that hasn't, you know, been the case over 10 years. And if there's concerns about investing, I do think there's been revenue surpluses. Um, you know, and I think I, so I would just share that. I would also share that, you know, this is going to sound mysterious, but I, it, it has to remain that way. But we are considering a major change in how we put on the festival that we think will lead to 10 to 15 percent increase in attendance. You'll have to stay tuned for that because we want to have a major announcement. But the, the crux of this change would be a major consumer value uh, and convenience that we would add to how we run the event. And, um, you know, I don't say things like that lightly, but that positive change for attendance will also bring increased risk to us uh, financially. So 
I will just, uh, I don't want to go on a, you know, a five minute commercial about the festival. I just wanted to say a few main points and then also explain the concern about the contention and ask that that be removed and hopefully we could move forward. Yes. Is it, um, is the issue with the language or just the whole thing at all? But it's, it's, I think the, my initial understanding of it, and again, could have been miscommunication, there would be a discussion about it, but that the, at the end of the discussion would have to be mutually agreed upon, you know, to have that money uh, taken out. And it evolved as a recommendation or got to contract point that the, after the good faith discussion, the DDA at its discretion could, you know, could take the funding away. So, so, so you're amenable to a, a discussion if there's a shortfall, a significant shortfall two years in a row, a good faith discussion between two parties. Exactly. Complete. Just as long as you guys wouldn't have the universal or unilateral, rather, uh, ability to take funding away, not knowing what our situation is. So 100 percent, you know, that was the spirit. I'm, I'm open to that. So, so the, the, the way it's written now is that there's a good faith discussion and then we decide. Yes, exactly, and, and, and the only, I would be, be open amenable to, to. There's a good faith discussion. And it has to be mutually agreed upon. And, and it's mutually agreed upon. Absolutely, yes. This doesn't say two years in a row, though. This says any two years. And any two years is fine after two twenty-two. I have no oh, issue sorry. with that. Uh, no. With the case, I think, from a factual standpoint, <coughs> after two twenty. I guess there would be four years where there could be two out of four years. It'd be 21, yeah, two, three, already, and four. So any two years, you know, is fine. But again, if there's a concern there, I think, I think that, that the, the profit side of the parking operation should go to the DDA if they have the risk on the negative side. It just seems like that would be a good way just to keep a rainy day fund, you know, just the revenue created by festival parking creates a rainy day fund as opposed to the DDA only eating funding if it was on the short side. So it just. And, and the surplus is the. We don't get the surplus as of right surplus. now. Right. Yeah. As of right now, we just get reimbursed by the city. Um, but there is, if there's a surplus, it doesn't come back to the DDA at this point. I mean. Uh, for our last, so in 17 and 19, it looks like we had quite a, a deficit in terms of this, um, the uh, um, <coughs> expenditures and revenue. Um, I know last year the weather was just horrific, um, but I don't know what 17's weather was like, but do we think attendance was down? I can speak to that if you yeah. like. Thank so you. in the last... Uh, in the last three years, due to weather, we've had three of our toughest years. So from 2016 to 2017 to 2016 was down 8%, and then we were, we were down 22% uh, additional to 2018. And then last year, we were up 2% from 2018, this past year. So in each of the last two years, we've had two weather events take place. So that means if you have a, a, a two to three hour weather event, unfortunately, even though it only rains for two to three hours, one this past year was on a Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the time, you know, we would all be in, in great shape. And then one happened Monday afternoon, also right into the, that. So it's not just the time that the rain is in Royal Oak, but it's also the fact that that rain is in other suburbs on the way uh, coming here, other communities, I should say, uh, coming over. And there's also the weather people saying, you know, it's this and that. So those have been, you know, unfortunate, uh, unfortunate situations. And my apologies, I was not aware of the 2017 one. Usually uh, I was notified by the city you know, if that was the case. So I did not know that you guys had a deficit. I, I, I have been aware of a couple $50,000 surplus years that have been there, you know, that have also, you know, uh, played a, commun a, a community purpose. Dr. Riley. Um, the, the one thing I'm thinking of about this is were we to enact this and then it happens, um, you know, Mr. Woods is, as he said, I mean, we've we've spent a little bit, but, you know, when you compare it to, like, the events that we run and what we spend for those and the amount of people we bring in, 
uh, we're getting a pretty good bang for the buck here in terms of exposure and bringing people into the city. The thing that I have the biggest problem with this is if we were to enact it, it would be at his worst time. In other words, it would be because he's had two tough years. And that's, at that point, we're just adding financial stress, financial stress to a partner of ours. Where, I mean, this is a partnership. And <clears throat> that's, that's the problem that I have with it. And I would say for the... Uh, for the hundred thousand that we do, um, and I uh, thank Mr. Witz for giving me some of the background on the um, marketing. Um, in my day job, I'm a marketing professional, so the amount of um, value we are getting for this hundred thousand is um, is good. It's um, it's actually. Well, we're really not. Even, most of the times, we're not even paying on it. We're pretty right. healthy, but we're getting it. But back. we're getting it back. Yeah. But I mean, but Should that expended. Sure but yeah. if there is an expenditure, sure. we we have, it's paid dividends to our city, and it's, I mean, it's bringing more people in than, our current, our current, uh, mm -hmm. other. Events. So I, I mean, from our. I think you hit on a really great point. We've spent a lot on our own Christmas parade and sure. things like that. Right. That were that was great, but this, at the end of the day, you're spending a similar amount and getting a lot more people coming into our downtown. And and in order to continue the success of the event, the proprietor has got to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 I'm just envisioning. That if we had it so that if, if it did happen, that we had a good faith discussion and made a mutual decision. If it did happen, I can imagine that discussion going, you know, I mean, it's, yes. it's not going to be a, a good situation for, for Mr. Wentz. He's going to, you know, especially if it's like two years in a row where we had a monsoon or something like that. And then all of a sudden we're, oh, by the way, right. yeah. we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, and, and what, kind of what we're doing is what we're asking for a, a, a semi-opt-out in the middle of a, of a, of a contract. And well, we, we aren't by asking this. I mean, I think, I think you're... By asking for the discussion. We're you're not. asking for the discussion. Right. A good point. We're, but, we're, we're not just immediately enacting it. Good point. Right. We, I, I do think a discussion definitely always needs to be had. Absolutely. But I think we... I think we have that in our First Amendment, in, in the uh, number two. Um, number two definitely states that Mr. Whitson and the DDA need to meet no more than 45 days before. And well, I, 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 would, I, I, would, I would leave some language in there that we would have the discussion on that point mm -hmm. if, if it were to happen, but have it be a mutually agreeable decision. I would agree. I, I agree with that also, and, and I and I don't. Mr. Witz has been a good partner here, and I don't think there's any need to panic here. And and again, the 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 wording that's in there currently right now, um, the last line of it says that the DDA reserves the right. right. That doesn't mean it's an automatic. Correct. This is not an automatic thing that's going to happen. This is the DDA could meet with Mr. Witz. We could come up with a, a, a plan and that's agreeable to both parties and we could just move forward with it just just like that but the way it's written so now they, it gives us the right to right, just make exactly, the decision exactly. agree so um, I, I know we still have some more comments here so I'm not I'm gonna make sure everybody gets heard um, but we have some options to what we can do here and I think um, um, mr. Gillum I think we would like you to chime in here because you're the one that wrote this. So we can amend this wording at this point? Should the board members? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, this is just proposed language based upon the direction that I received from the, the subcommittee. This and, is what we've got um, back. Just one comment, everywhere. though. I think, and I can't speak for the subcommittee, but I think part of the concern was not that necessarily that attendance might go down, but just that parking revenue might go down. Okay, well, I know there's normally a relationship between the two, but I think, and again, I can't speak for the subcommittee, but 
think one of their concerns was that it could be possible that attendance could stay the same or possibly even go up. And then with either some kind of mass transit or ride sharing or Uber or Lyft or something mass like transit. that, the parking revenue would go down even though attendance could go up. It's so I recognize that weather is also a consideration too. But and, and, and I guess I guess my, my point to that would be, well, I mean, if, if, if that <coughs> happens, well, then we've reaped the benefit of that many more people in town and yeah, it cost us a little bit. I mean, I, I, I don't think you can, in a contract, place a bet on Uber. You know, I mean, I, I guess you can, but, you know, we, we reserve the right to, but after eight years and... And what is, I mean, what, what, what is it, what do you think for eight years, average between three and 400,000 a year, typically? Yeah, I, I definitely. <clears throat> I mean, it's average that, it's averaged $100,000 to Royal Oak Charities, all the money that's been pledged has been returned to the community and community organizations and groups throughout the city. That has uh, been over a million dollars in 10 years to Royal Oak organizations. I will just say about this community, I do, you know, I do think ride sharing and, and Uber and Lyft will have some effect on it, but I, I do also say that uh, we are in Detroit and people more than any other community in the country stick by their cars, love their cars, love to drive. And uh, I do think those trends are, are not quite ready to have a major impact. And I think what you'll see um, with our change next year, I, I think you will see a, uh, if our attendance or the weather patterns are similar, I, I would, you know, use the word in Uber <coughs> bet, I would make a gentleman's wager that uh, uh, there would be a um, increase in attendance uh, and parking revenue just based on similar weather factors, based on this change that we are going to make. So um, anyway, again, sorry for the mystery there, but I would. If we think that, this is, I mean, if this language is really due to the fact that we think that ride sharing or, or an Uber or Lyft would be used as opposed to coming into one of our parking garages, I mean, couldn't we write it that way? Well, 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 but that, uh, the, to, to me, that would be a little, a little bit insane on our part, seeing as how we just spent $30 million on two parking structures. Oh, I would agree. I mean, we, we, uh, we, we spent $30 million on two parking structures, but we're worried about Uber over $100,000. Well, I think we've right. gone down a rabbit hole well, in terms of the parking issue. I have some other questions and comments about the, the legalities of writing into a contract, and, and this is no reflection on you, Mr. Witz, um, writing a vendor into a decision on how we disperse our budget. Is that legal? And what's to stop any other vendor that comes to us for a sponsorship from being part of the negotiation process? It's, it's opening Pandora's box in terms of the contracts that we write with all of the vendors that, that we use for our events. And, and Arts Pizza Needs, second, this is another issue, is, is literally a third of the consumer marketing's budget. There's an option that Mr. Twing wrote in the resolution that we could just move this over to the city and, and, and make it so much simpler for him to, to negotiate. I think we should consider that as well. Um, I don't think that the Consumer Marketing Committee has spent enough due diligence on this contract to decide it at the dais. I think it needs to go back to the committee and we need to talk about it some more. Well, well uh, Gary, one, one thing I'll say in terms of comparing it with other vendors, <coughs> um, I, I don't know that you would find a comparison. This is no, a, I mean, this is, no I'm, I'm just saying, this is a three-way contract, first of all, <clears throat> between us, the, the city, and Mr. Wiz. We are, the, the way, the thing that we're, you know, the outlay that we're doing in front, right, and then it's based on something coming back. I mean, if, uh, I, I don't know that, I don't know that there's, we have other contracts like that. If there were other contracts like that, you know, if, if, I'll tell you what, if somebody else was bringing in three hundred to 400,000 people a year for eight years in a row, and we got our money back six or seven out of those eight years, I'd be amenable to wording it the exact same way. I completely agree. And, and the scenarios that, have, that, are take, that are outlined in this probably will never happen. But writing it into a contract is, is opening it up for other people down well, the line. You never know. Like, like I said, and, like I said, if, 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 uh, if a... Fit an image of Arts, Beats, and Eats is here, 
and they want the language written the way that Mr. Woods would prefer it, I'm, I'm in. First of all, I, I just, can I respond to that, or is this still open discussion, or do you, should I not? No, I, I, go ahead. Okay, so just a couple things. One, we're not open to uh, switching the format of this around at this particular juncture for the next round of contracts. We would absolutely be open to it. We've gone down a process. I've met with the Consumer Marketing Committee. I had approval from the Consumer Marketing Committee. We had approval from the DDA at, our, at the last meeting that you guys did have. We were all understanding. We were all in agreement doing the event on the same ter terms. Everything was being moved forward. We waited till November. There was no meeting in November, and now we are here in December. So we are asking to move forward. The language, we're not negotiating that everything's been negotiated. All the terms are essentially on the same terms as they've always been. There has not been a big uh, a negotiation here. There's been a request to uh, seek feedback. We have asked to seek feedback since that. I've, I've uh, <coughs> called Mr. Yezbeck on numerous times uh, just saying, hey, we're ready to meet. He said, you know, we're going to get it together. <coughs> Let's organize. We are open to do that. We were just responding to a concern that you had. It's not like a vendor, you know, uh, your partners negotiate their agreements at all times. And, and to say that this is a third of your budget when it actually hasn't even been spent, you know, in years uh, for the most part is, I think, you know, again, not even considering the amount of people and that are here and coming and the marketing value and all those kinds of things, I think, is a, a statement that is a little misleading in the sense that that budget has been returned um, almost all the time. And the value compared to other events are, are probably, you're saying a third. If it were a third, the, it's probably 50 to 60 times the marketing value and attendance at a minimum that's being returned compared to any other events that are, you know, that are going on. But the, the fact is the money has been returned to the budget the idea of negotiating a contract, always two parties negotiate a contract. All vendors negotiate their contracts and their, their terms. So negotiation is part of any partnership. I mean, that, and this particular clause is just saying that I prefer not to have in there at all, but I want to show good faith in the sense that we're willing to, to have a discussion about it. But I don't even know if we are, to Commissioner Rosbeck's point, if, if we're having a discussion anyway, why specifically, you know, create, you know, more confusion over this particular issue? Because I think the committee knows the history with us is that we are willing to discuss, you know, any issue that comes on. It doesn't mean we'll, you know, roll with it. But I, I just, you know, I think a couple of those comments, Commissioner Bragg, I, I don't, you know, no offense here either. I, I, I don't think that those are you know, fair comments based on the history of how much money is actually expended into the event and the fact that all parties negotiate their contracts. I mean, it doesn't set any precedent if you have an agreement with a promoter, whether it's somebody you hire, that, you know, there's terms discussed as to how much they want to get paid or what they want to invest in or all that stuff. That's part of any contract. There's always vendors negotiating. It doesn't set any uh, bad precedent. I do agree that the language you know, is more of a trust issue than, you know, anything. I just think it's more of a good faith thing that we're both trying to show comfort with each other's, you know, concerns. And I do think the biggest issue, you know, is hearing the concerns of, you know, businesses and seeing if there's some things that we can do uh, to, to make some changes, um, you know, to help, you know, so. So, so you, so my, I, I'm, I want to need clarity. You're looking to change the good faith discussion to a mutually agreed upon, which I, I'm not sure. All, all I'm saying, Commissioner no, Baglio, decision. is that we're not okay with agreeing to materially change the term of the agreement. I have made that clear to Mr. Yesbeck when he brought this to me. We are not open to changing this when we're in a period of uncertainty. So it doesn't matter what the language says specifically. It just can't say that the DDA can unilaterally reduce our parking and based on all the work that's been done we are not interested in going going back and creating a whole nother three to four month discussion with the Royal Oak Commission and everything for this particular agreement because we were all on the same page and maybe not everyone was on the same page but there was a you know a <coughs> unanimous vote at this with this body here in October's meeting to move forward on an agreement on the same terms and good spirit and that's exactly 
where we were at today, except a couple things have come up. And we have been amenable to a couple of those things. And one thing that materially changes the term we're not amenable to. So I don't think whether the word mutually agreed on is in, we just aren't OK with the DDA being able to change it at, at their own discretion. OK, let, let me just say I was on the subcommittee that had this discussion. And the, and the focus of the discussion really was about how to get feedback to the festival. I mean, it's overwhelmingly positive as far as the feedback. There are There is a certain um, faction of, of the business community that, as you say, does, it, it doesn't hit in the sweet spot. And I think every year we should get together, and, and this language says before and after the festival, to try to um, bring the festival to, to uh, meet the sweet spot of, of more of the businesses downtown. But, it, but you know, historically speaking, uh, financially, it's, it's been nothing but positive for us. And, and as, as you say, it's uh, a real value in terms of marketing. So the real focus was, uh, how, how do we have conversation? How do we make sure? And, and let's maybe include a little more specifically in the agreement that we're going to sit down and make sure we're, we're presenting the best festival that we can present every year. And, and, and Mr. Witz is you know, very amenable to doing that before and after, and you've um, confirmed that today. The, the thought process behind, I guess, the continuation of that discussion was, how does the DDA kind of protect itself? Uh, we've been approached by a lot of uh, festivals, a lot of concepts, and, and we can't obviously respond to everybody. But everybody's not arts, beats, and eats, as, as you point out. So there's a distinction there. And, and practically speaking, you know, protecting ourselves, this is only a three-year uh, three uh, uh, extension. Mm -hmm. The language says that it would have to be two years out of the three that we didn't recover 50% of our money. So how much, you know, practically speaking, we're not really protecting ourselves uh, very much because we'd be in the third year anyway. So, you know, in, in having the discussion on this point, I don't, I don't know that we're really accomplishing a lot from the DDA's perspective by including this additional language while at the same time creating some uncertainty or additional uncertainty for Mr. Witz as far as his programming and sponsorship and all that. So just even though I was a part of that original discussion, I think in, in uh, you know, reevaluating this, I think the DDA is, you know, we're going to be talking again in uh, two years before, or two years prior to three, the yeah. two to three, three years. years. Yeah. And if there's a problem, then that would be the time to sit down and talk about, you know, hey, the finances aren't, aren't going the way we, you know, contemplated, and, and we have to take a, a serious look at this. So I just, I think that this additional language, um, while, uh, you know, was a good thought and, 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 and had the right intention to protect the DDA. I don't think, practically speaking, we're, we're losing much by not including it, especially if we leave in there that uh, both sides will have a good faith discussion if there is a, a financial hiccup. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, having said that, I, you know, I'd like to make a motion to approve this contract, this Fourth Amendment, without the, the um, language that's uh, provided in section three here, or section 4G of the original contract, paragraph three of this amendment, that speaks to the DDA's ability to um, reduce the sponsorship amount. So I'd like to, my motion would be to approve the agreement, deleting that reduction capability on the part of the DDA, but putting in there that if there is two years of, of uh, failure to recover 50% that we would have a good faith discussion with the festival. One second, I want to, I have a motion on the table, so I want to deal with that first, okay? Um, there is a motion on the table. Do you understand? I want to check with Mr. Gillum that he understands the clarity of the motion so that when we're voting on it, we're voting on it correctly. Can I, if I could, uh, Member yes, but can I maybe suggest what the language would be? Sure. In there, okay. I think one comment deserves a disparity. 
what, what Mr. Yazbek saying and what was my understanding is that would start in 2021. The language that you have starts in 2020. If it's only the last three years, it would be 2021, 2022, and, 20, and, and 21, 2, and 3. So that it would not be 20. So again, if we're having a good faith discussion, it doesn't specifically matter, but what you just proposed would say the last three years of the agreement, and that's what was discussed, you know, um, in discussions about this in the past, so. So <clears throat> are you saying starting in 2021 or just going forward? All right, I think, I don't think the year really matters. Well, it does. well can, can we alter the existing contract? I mean, isn't the extension, the extension is. Yeah. I'm sure you can alter anything as we're talking about that. I would just say it's always been presented to me as the last three years of the, the newest <coughs> period of the agreement was the ones, that's what this was all about, was the three years added on to the agreement. That's what the discussion how it was presented to me. So I, just for purposes of, of ease here uh, and not getting into other documents, I would say 2021, the extension period. Then what I would suggest would be <coughs> in in the language regarding the amendment to Section 4G, <clears throat> the first two sentences would remain the same, which is exactly the way they are in the existing agreement. Mm -hmm. And then picking up with beginning in 2021, mm -hmm. um, if the DEA fails to be reimbursed for 50% of its sponsorship in any two years of the agreement, and I'm going to kind of jump up to the changes that we're making to Section 2, and I'll pick up on that and say if the DDA fails blah, blah, in any two years of the agreement, <clears throat> the parties agree to meet for good faith discussion on um, possible reduction in the amount of the sponsorship fee. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. That's my motion. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Good job. I, understand. I understand the motion. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, and I'll support the motion. Okay. And so I have a motion on the table, and I have a second. Now's the time for some discussion. Uh, I, I, if you just want to hang back, Mr. Witz, and see if there's any more questions, just hang back and let us talk about this at the table here briefly. Um, who wants to go first? I'm going to go first. I think so in my short time here on the board, um, I have talked to a few businesses, and... Um, I will say that not all of them, even though <coughs> I was here prior to, I lived in Royal Oak prior to the Abe not being here, um, and it, it was definitely not a happening weekend for the downtown area. Um, I will say that those businesses affected in the, in the footprint definitely... We need to we need to be able to be their voice um, with regards to the feedback that they uh, and I was looking at some of the other amendments. I think we need to just make sure that we are um, like Exhibit A. We are taking full license of these ex these Exhibit A benefits of ours and um, ensuring that we're we're doing our due diligence with our business community. Thank you. I'm, I'm comfortable with the language as modified. Um, I, uh, my, my, my angst was having something written into the agreement that gives the mutually, the, the, the discussion, the way you understand it is perfect. I, I completely support it. Uh, Director Ryan. Uh, first thing I'll say is, um, as far as, as the consumer marketing budget, if, if that hundred comes out of their budget, then when the hundred comes back, it should go into it in that year. So it should be a wash. If we're, <laughs> I agree, but it's still. Yeah, and I understand. Uh, secondly, um, I agree that businesses are affected, and you know that's unfortunately a byproduct of any time we do an event. There's somebody who's always going to be affected. There were people who were upset that Main Street was closed Saturday night. Oh, yes. Well, you know it was a great parade. Okay, so. There's, there's give and take with everything, and, and unfortunately, you know, fortunately, and there, there are a lot of businesses who Arts, Beats, and Eats makes their year. Correct. Okay. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is, and I know it's a moot point at this point, 
but but the other thing about this is uh, a lot of people at this table uh, have their own businesses, and if you have a source of revenue that you're expecting to come in year after year, and you plan in advance, and I'm sure Mr. Witz like doesn't <coughs> just start planning the next year like the day after the event ends. And I'm sure that the way we disperse that to them, it's a little bit of quote unquote seed money. Okay? Mm -hmm. And to have, if I were in his shoes and there was a, a risk of losing that seed money, that creates a whole new set of problems. A whole new set of problems. It's, it's like a, you know, a baseball <coughs> player who's got a mortgage and he hits 250, and all of a sudden it's like you're, you're staying, but your contract's cut in half. So, what about my mortgage? Anything else? Director yeah, I'll, I'll just say that, that my main concern was making sure that the businesses that maybe aren't having so much so much success with the festival have a voice, and I think Mr. Cameron has, has done a good job at collecting some feedback and some information. And, and to be fair to Mr. Witz, he has been, uh, you know, ready, willing, and, and able to meet with these businesses and. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just got kind of caught up uh, the busy time of the year. But I think after the first of the year, we'll do that and, and, and let these folks have a voice and, and try to make the best festival we can make. OK. Um, just real quick, um, I'm going to support the motion, um, as it stated. Um, I think Director Yazvik did a good job with this. And um, he pointed out something in the discussion tonight that that kind of put me over the top for this was uh, if, starting in 2021, if we're looking for two years of not meeting the goal, then, and we're looking at three years out, we're using up the whole extension period. So should the DDA at some point in the future want to revisit this again, we, we would only be one year away from being able to have that ability to do that. So I think we're, we're accomplishing what we want to accomplish. We're just maybe putting it off for a little bit. So um, that being said, is there any other comments before I call for the vote? OK, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Mr. Chair, just one follow-up comment? Yes, just please. For the benefit here, for the benefit of WITS, this is technically, this is different language than what was approved by the City Commission. <laughs> Um, this is going to have to go back to the city commission uh, for approval. Sorry, John. But, <laughs> but I don't expect there will be an issue at the city commission because the changes the commission had request are reflected in this about the obligation to meet and, and discuss after. This is really a DDA issue, but because there are three parties to the contract, the commission has to approve it. What I will plan to do is to put this amended agreement on the consent agenda for the next city commission meeting on January 13th. And I expect it will stay on the consent agenda and get approved. But obviously, it's not my decision. So, Sure. I guess I would just ask, um, uh, if that were the case, uh, if the commission didn't approve it, then you guys, you know, I'd love to see it in the motion that you guys would be fine with that crazy clause um, not being in there. Because again, it's, it's a good faith thing that we agreed to. Tim shaking his head. I, I don't know what that's reflective of. But <coughs> well, you got a three-party agreement. They all have to agree to it. You can't ask this body to waive something they just blessed. Right. Well, I guess I would just say, in good faith, we would then go back to you guys. It would just, you only be two days later? I'm sorry. I think it would only be two days later. Sure. You know I what guess, I'm saying? I'm just letting you know that we would come back to you and have the ask to have that not there mm -hmm. because again, this just understand from our perspective. Again, we. We were at the point we were all in agreement, and the city agreed to it, and this came up that was new. So this, this is just of a concern till it gets done. So, um, and just a, a closing comment. Thank you uh, for the vote. A um, couple things, uh, you know, just going forward. I guess you know what I'll save it for the discussions with Sean. I just want to give a preview of some things we can and can't do related to that. But I'll just save that for a different uh, forum and discussion and just leave it with uh, thank you for the support. And we are excited to be here again. OK. Thank you, Mr. Wiss. Thank you, John. Uh, don't go away. Um, <laughs> item number nine, festival agreement, rock and rides. 
I think very briefly, the Consumer Marketing Committee did meet, uh, and the City Attorney did draft a, a festival agreement for Rock and Rides uh, uh, for a couple year period. It's pretty similar to what you did last year, and the committee's recommended approval, and there is a suggested resolution. Easy one. Director Yaswick. Move to approve the proposed resolution. Support. Supported by Director Krieger. Um, Mr. Gillum, just for clarity, um, so there, there had to be two changes in here, I would guess, it would be one being that it's a two-year agreement as opposed to one. Is that correct? Uh, really, really a, a couple changes. Um, <clears throat> the, the festival for this year um, was originally approved by the City Commission as a special event on a one-year basis. So there was a special event permit that was issued, but, and, and technically um, Mr. Witz's organization signed off on the special event permit, but it wasn't an agreement in the sense that this is an agreement going forward for two years. So, so that's number one. <clears throat> and then with that event, um, there was also a separate sponsorship agreement with the DDA. Okay. And so what I did was mirror um, our Arts, Beats, and Eats Festival Agreement, I made this a tri-party agreement incorporating the special event terms from this year's festival along with the sponsorship terms from the agreement that the, uh, the uh, promoter had with the DDA itself. So it's kind of a hybrid of the two, okay. if you will. That's fine. Um, and my last question would be, um, I seem to remember that the similar request came from the city commission in terms of meeting with the promoters. Is so was that included in this language? I didn't get a chance to. Yes, and it's in subsection 5S at the top of page four of the draft agreement. JWA John with Associates agrees to meet with the DDA prior to and no more than 45 days after the festival in each year of the agreement to discuss negative and or positive feedback related to the festival. Okay. And there's um, also language in here um, regarding the timing for a request for an extension, which would allow that feedback to take place before the request for the extension was made by Mr. Witz, if there was one. Okay. This is a two-year agreement, correct. Okay. So we do have a motion on the table. It has been seconded. Um, now would be the time for questions or comments. From any board members? I'm not seeing any. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too, sir. Um, tell us what's happening. What's the item 10 2020 South Main Improvements, 6 to 7th Street. Um, as I indicated in the memo, the uh, city's engineering department is planning to install a, a couple of islands uh, in South Main uh, in the segment between the 6th and 7th. There's a copy of the plan attached to the memo uh, where those islands are going, their width and length are, are, are indicated. They're basically in the center left turn island. They're very similar to the ones on North Main at Pingree and uh, University. Uh, slightly a little longer in one instance. Uh, the question was, does the DDA want to uh, have a landscaping plan prepared and landscaping installed in those, as well as maintained, uh, similar to what you did with the ones on North Main? Engineering is simply uh, uh, having them plan to be concrete islands as part of their road work. Uh, if you're supportive of that, I would, I would get a quote uh, from worry-free, put it together, uh, and, and as well as an indication of uh, uh, future maintenance costs that would get added to their uh, maintenance budget. That would come back to you at a future meeting to uh, uh, be approved. However, given the timing of this, I was looking for action today in terms of whether you wanted to proceed or not, uh, as engineering would be bidding this in January. Uh, I want to make sure that we're bidding it in the correct fashion. Good. Director Krieger. <laughs> I say pave it. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we knew no, you. I, I knew you would. I'd, I'd make a motion to uh, yeah move the resolution. Obviously, you know we want to beautify it. It's our job as a DDA to put money back in, so I think it's well worth doing. Absolutely. Just like yeah. when, you, when you when you get off of uh, six ninety six. Yeah. yeah. The fire Same exactly. Looks great. Yeah. Looks great. Very dramatic. With my reputation of extravagance, <laughs> I would really wish that some of these islands would have electrical capabilities in them so that we could light whatever we put in there. That's a, good um, idea. That's a really good idea. That's an, an extra level of, you know, sitting in, in Tony's that's place, really looking across the street at lighted um, they can, they can landscaping. They can get that. Oh. I would agree. That's a great call. How can we look into that, Mr. Twing? Can we look um, into that? I'll ask him to look into it as part of the costs on it. Um, question is, where do they have to get fed from? what the cost and whether it has to get metered. Uh, a lot of times it's not worth the expense. And then it's another line that is crossing the road to, if you need to dig it up and work on it. But uh, I'll ask him to look and see what it takes on each one of these. Okay. So this is gonna come back to us either way. So. Any other discussion on this? Like this was looked at for infrastructure and mm -hmm. they recommend and approve in this, so. Um, no, well, clarity, it. this did not go to infrastructure. They haven't had a meeting. Oh, I thought we, this wasn't the one we did? No, almost, okay. Um, we do, we have a motion on the table already. I'll second it. We have a second. Any other discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Okay, getting down there. Um, let's go with the downtown manager's report. This month, uh, my report covers my activities for November and December. Uh, you'll see that I included some data of um, just some uh, updates with some downtown businesses. We've uh, had some closed businesses, some recently expanded ones, um, some that are now open, uh, and some that are still coming soon. So I'll, uh, I'll leave it to you to review that list, and you can ask me any questions uh, if you'd like. Um, also included some data on our expenses with Small Business Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be working with the Consumer Marketing Committee to go over uh, you know, the expectations for that, and uh, you know, we can revise our, our budget for, for 2020 accordingly. Um, there's a couple of things I did want to bring to the board's attention. Uh, the first thing is uh, downtown Royal Oak is going to be hosting, or is going to be the site of the Great Lakes Main Street Conference in 2020. Uh, last year it was held in South Bend, Indiana. Um, I spoke with uh, folks at the county that are planning this, and they're looking to actually host it uh, on October 4th, 5th, and 6th. That's a uh, that's a Monday and Tuesday arriving Sunday night they've been working with the Hyatt and they've been reaching out to a number of downtown businesses to, to plan accordingly um, they may submit a request for sponsorship uh, uh, to the DDA at some point I'm not sure what that's going to look like but I'll make sure it gets to the appropriate committee when that comes um, uh, secondly just an update on the pedicabs I've spoken to uh, the owners of scoop and we're going to be putting together a community meeting for the downtown stakeholders in January specifically dedicated to the pedicab service uh, that they'd like to bring back for the, the summer months. They're looking to have it run from the Memorial Day weekend, you know, through to the end of the summer. Um, so we're currently planning that. We're going to be selecting a date probably in later January, and we're going to be getting the word out to, uh, you know, all of the stakeholders and, you know, hoping that they they participate as, as advertisers. Sean, on that, um, you have a uh, feel for what their uh, costs are per month? Yeah. Okay, if you can, because uh, we need to get the business marketing committee, we need to sit down on that. Okay. If you could, we'll set a meeting. Yeah. Certainly. All right. Um, I just also wanted to bring to your attention that this uh, December 2019, this month, is the last month of our contract with Mark Slane, who's been providing public relations services for the DDA for the last six months. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention, you know, if it'll be an issue at an upcoming committee meeting. Um, I included some information about Spooktacular and Jingle. I think Spooktacular was very well attended. I wasn't able to give you an update in November as it was not here. Um, Jingle, I think we... Uh, We'll have uh, 
us some time at the Consumer Marketing Committee to kind of go over the results of that, and they can make whatever revisions or, or changes that they'd like. Um, and that concludes my report. Um, you'll no also notice there's some attachments. I did include some feedback that I have received in document form from some downtown businesses and stakeholders regarding their experiences with Arts, Beats, and Eats. That's more of just an FYI just to keep you apprised of some of the sentiments that I've been receiving downtown. Um, in terms of small business, I just want to give you some feedback <coughs> that um, from a consumer perspective, uh, they felt that we missed the mark in terms of not offering free parking that day or um, providing the giveaway that, that was in previous years, um, given like the ornament was a big hit with people like me. Um, uh, and I had actually people come up to me um, who live in the, in the area state that, that they did not come to downtown for Small Business Saturday because they didn't feel it was promoted. So I don't know. I mean, I'd like to think about that. Um, I don't know how we've done in the years past, especially with it says we came out of out of 51 communities. We came in sixth. I don't know if we've come in higher than that or if we've if that was our best year. Well, that's that's a separate thing. So that that is the county shop text win contest event, which is something right. that's actually not managed by the DDA. That's that's. Oh, a I understand program. that totally. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, but <coughs> but part of that is is part of this larger promotion of just shopping in downtown. That I just I I felt it was very absent this year as a as a consumer, and in years past I have come down and. Um, so one change that we did make, um, and I included that expense, is that we put together mailers and we mailed out to 10,000 homes information about Small Business Saturday, which is not something that we've ever done in the past. In the, in the past, we just kept it relegated to just social media posts. Okay. This year was, was the first year that we actually did a direct mailing. Um, um, it's also the first year that we did the, the food truck with the free hot chocolate. So those two things were different from the previous two years in which we only spent the money on the ornaments and the bags. I was able to get the bags cheaper this year, actually about a third cheaper than, right. than previous years. So we were still able to have the bags. We still distributed those. We still had the ornaments. Uh, people with completed passports actually got the, the gift oh. bags with the ornaments and uh, included with gift cards and, and everything else. So they were encouraged to come back to the jingle event to turn in their passports, and then the, we'd give them the, the value of everything else. So, Sounds um, good. Yeah, I'm open to having a, a conversation to make it more effective, more efficient, you know, more yeah, visible I, in future years. These, this was just feedback from from friends of mine that know I'm on the DDA and yeah. have normally take part in... That's good information, for sure. Yeah, maybe we can make sure that Small Business Saturday gets put on the next uh, consumer marketing agenda. Certainly. For discussion. Um, I will say, uh, just as a side note, Jingle, I thought it was a good, uh, the parade was a great hit, um, and uh, I was happy to see the crowds on Main Street. So yes. I was down there. It was good, and I think consumer marketing is going to take a, a good look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, probably at their next meeting. I think all the probably all the committees are going to be meeting first week of January or so. So. Um, anything else? Uh, any other business for the DDA? Uh, we do have an, uh, a work session on the downtown park. Um, I would ask you to simply uh, make a motion to adjourn to room 309. They have to set this up for the downtown task force yet tonight. Uh, so we'll be back in 309. I'll make that motion. Well, we'll get, uh, just one, one thing. Um, on the Sherman parking lot, um, we were going to remove the permit parkers, um, or move them over the garage. Uh, Starts in January. Starts in January? Okay. And also the park mobile, hopefully. I know. Who would we check with on that? Right. Oh. Oh, beauty. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mr. Gillum has made a motion to adjourn to room 309. I need a second. Uh, second. Second. 
Second by Director Rosvick. Uh, discussion? None? Let's do the vote. Aye. 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 And we are adjourned.